So this is the eBay C64 longboard that I got a while back that's not working properly. And I've actually just popped the uh, lid off the RF modulator just to have a look inside. I thought there was actually something rattling around inside, but it isn't. I think I was moving the computer, but it's these ferrite beads that were actually rattling and it was confusing me. But I do want to take this off anyway, because I want to replace it with this modern replacement because this thing produces a much better output. So uh, I think it's time to get rid of this. So I'll probably do a before and after comparison on this just to see what it's like. But I think this modulator works, but it's just not very good. Yeah, it's soldered on in a couple of places and the pins themselves are soldered on. Or maybe three places, four places. But it shouldn't be too hard to get off, I think. But I'll do the comparison first. The video output is really bad. That's with an S-Video cable, basically, where the Chrome Illuma is just not got any adjustments or anything like that in it. It's apparently that checkerboard that you can see there is caused by the, I think the Luma signal being too hot or something, but it doesn't look good at all. So it might look good like if you zoom out on the camera, but if you actually zoom in, you, this is more like what I'm looking at. You can see it just looks absolutely horrible. Oh, and actually I can see here as well, this Commodore 64 has got these problems. Look, it's got this bit of memory that's gone dodgy. So the problems that it had before are still there. But that's not the problem I'm fixing right now. Oh yeah, and that's the back bit going crazy. Even with the fact that the computer's not fully working here, you can see that this video output is absolutely awful. So the next step for this uh, dodgy board is to take this modulator out and put this replacement one in instead. And hopefully get much better output than that, even though the computer's still completely balked. I'm going to fix that first. Right, let's see if we can get this damn thing off. These things are quite hard to get off. Let's work out where I've got a desolder. Wow, there is a ton of solder on these. Well, I definitely got a lot of the solder off there, but that isn't enough to desolder it at all. Right, let's see if we can do any better with this. Oh, it's still too big. It is getting it though. This thing is starting to wiggle. Um, I really went like, I used the, I put the soldering, desoldering station on 390 and I went around with solder wick and I just got rid of loads of the solder off these. And I'm just heating this one off here. And I am managing to get it off, but it's difficult. That's definitely coming out. I think it helps if you just give these a twist because they're now pretty much desoldered but just giving those a twist to make sure they move. Oh! Something has popped. So I think that one came out. So where are we up to? Oh yeah, I can see the pins have come out there. Yeah, this is totally not easy at all. Oh! Is that one out? Oh my god. <laughs> think it's out oh that was so hard to get out that is not going back in I can tell you that much that took a lot of desoldering I mean I've got it out without breaking anything which is the main thing yeah so it's come out perfectly but so the way I did it in the end was I went through I, I used the desoldering station to suck the solder off these pins then I went through with the desoldering station on 390 and used it with some solder wick and loads of flux to suck as much solder off these as I could. And then once I'd done that, I twisted them with the pliers just to make sure these were properly free because these are just held into this ground plane. And then I was having to poke a screwdriver in underneath there while I heated up that one and just popped it out and then popped that one out and popped that one out. But I did make sure that all the pins were fully desoldered and free first. So I knew I wasn't going to rip any traces out. But that was really, really hard to get that off. That took absolutely ages. So yeah, so desoldering these things, just not trivial. Yeah, so now this thing's out, this new modulator will be able to go in here. Right, I've cleaned all the goop off this board. Well, most of it anyway. I've actually pretty much cleaned the whole board. It was actually quite dirty from when I got it. Um, it had loads of dust on it and stuff, which is all pretty much gone now. Uh, and all the flux is gone. So this little teeny board, I'm just going to solder this directly in. It's got these little pin headers on it. They go in here. They will stand off a bit far. I'll actually stand it off with something like this thing. 
just to get it to stand off the board a little bit. And there we go. <laughs> I'll take this out now. So it's just standing off a little bit. It's got no nothing to prop it up, but the solder's just holding it up. Well, there we go. It looks quite neat. Let's see what the video output's like. What are we going to get? Well, we've got signal. Oh, dear. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's... Oh, I think that's my cable, is it? Oh, what is that? That's awful, but when I touch the cable, it's doing that, I think. Right, I need to fiddle with these uh, trimmer pots on here. So it's working, but it's got some... It does already even look better apart from the, the corruption. Um, I'm just going to turn these right down. Because um, I think that's where it recommends you start at. There's these 20 turn trimmer pots. They were tuned with the C64C that I had it in. Let's just turn them right down. Well, there it is right now. It's making some horrible, it's doing some horrible things. So let's turn up the chroma. And I think it recommends to do that first. I don't know if this is right, actually. We're just turning the luma way up now. Whoop! Uh, that, that chroma thing's definitely working. Because it's definitely like unsaturated there. You turn it up and you get more and more colour. It's certainly not better. It's got this big rolling line down it, which is weird i wonder what that's coming from so it's the next day now and i've been fiddling with this modulator and there we go it it kind of works the screen's a little shaky and i've still got this rolling line going down it uh, i think there's two rolling lines just going down the picture i've been trying to figure out what's going on oh there's my bad ram test the uh this computer has got other problems as well it's not related to this so i've been trying to figure out what was going on and to do that, put a little a couple of little pin headers in the board, and just put it on with pin headers. And uh, that wasn't just to, that wasn't to actually change anything. But I just wanted to put the old modulator back in and see if I'd broken the computer or anything like that in any kind of way. I can actually pop the old modulator back in, and this is where you'll get the surprise because I've actually figured out what's going on here, and it's a little bit weird. And check out the picture. It's absolutely terrible. Now let's just make sure I've got it connected right. Yeah, so I've got the connection pushed in. It looks like that. It looks awful. And if I touch it, sometimes it changes. And then I discovered that if I take the shield of the modulator and just tap it against something that's grounded, it all just comes good again. Oh, well, mostly if it makes good contact. But suddenly, yeah, it's, it's like really bad output because this modulator is not very good. But if I touch it against the shield on the cartridge port, it comes good. If I take it off, it's all bad again. So there it is touching it, and there it is without. So weirdly, now this thing's out of the board, and it's just on these fly leads, when it's like this, it works pretty much as badly as this replacement. So that got me thinking, like, why is that? And what's going on with the grounding on this thing? So technically, this one here, uh, on this particular C64, is the ground pin. So that should be feeding into the ground on this, and then that gets passed through to this voltage regulator and all the other stuff. Uh, if you check this, uh, that's ground, this thing here, it's not grounded. It's floating. Uh, and I'm like, well, what's going on there? And actually, um, on the other side of the board, so this ground pin here just goes to this hole here that's filled with solder. And if I touch that, so that's connected to there, and it's actually just a little jumper um, that's not connected. Let me get a zoom in on that. So this pin here is connected to this here, which then goes to this jumper that says open IPAL and short GPAL. I don't know what that means, but it's not shorted. What it means is this ground pin here, that this board is totally relying on to work, um, is just floating. It's not connected 
to the ground, which is here. And this thing didn't have a ground connection. It was getting grounded via the case. I'm not exactly sure how that's supposed to work, but that's the reason we're getting the interference thing because so this thing is very reliant on getting its ground from here because it can't get it from anywhere else. Because that's floating, this board was working without being grounded at all. So if I reconnect this, so that's pretty much working except it's got that rolling noise on it. If I just get a little jumper lead and I touch those, that jumper together, let me just find a little jumper lead. So I'm just gonna short that, that jumper that pad that says that's connecting the ground pin and here we go hang on oh and there we go look and the whole thing just comes good i take it off and it's back to bad again so basically this thing has a floating ground and i don't know why i don't know what the significance of this open ipal short gpal is probably need to look that up yeah and the output looks way better and I can probably adjust that to make it look a bit better than that. But it's way better than the other modulator. The other one is utter rubbish. And there it is without the ground. So it's got a floating ground. Yeah, there it is. So I'm just shorting that jumper there. And that just fixes the problem. If I just short it with this thing. So I'm just going to put a blob of solder on there. Um, because this thing can't work without a ground. So I kind of desoldered this for nothing, but it did kind of help me out by putting this one back, kind of showed me what the problem was. This thing's been specifically designed to have a floating ground on the PAL board. So I don't know how that works. I don't know what the reasoning is for that, but this, this new one replacement cannot function like that. Let's pop this one back in. And now let's see what we get. It should completely fix it. It's spot on. Yeah, so that's a massive improvement on the other one. Absolutely, yeah, apart from the RAM test being bad. <laughs> but it's a huge improvement. So this, this computer is like one step closer to working. So yeah, that old modulator looked terrible. This one looks way better. But um, worth knowing that these boards don't, aren't grounded through that pin. It's just floating. Yeah, so worth knowing that that little jumper there is basically what's connecting the ground pin to ground and it's on this particular board was just left open so a little blob of solder has fixed the video output so now i need to remove these pin headers and re-solder this back the way it was um this thing is apparently working fine it just needs a ground connection weirdly <laughs> there we go okay so i think we're back where we started except uh i've actually grounded the modulator <laughs> so let's just give it a quick try and make sure it's working i mean the computer doesn't work but at least the modulator will work maybe i've seen that i've still got the rolling lines what's going on there why have i got rolling lines oh hang on a minute i've got a dodgy cable i think i think i've got a dodgy cable as well i've still got rolling lines though yeah it still doesn't totally look like it's grounded let's try it that is grounded now. Oh yeah, so the, the interference is kind of gone, but on some screens you can still see it. The output's way better on that screen, but on the blue screen you can see some rolling interference. I don't know what it's getting the interference from. Wow, look at all the bad RAM. <laughs> this computer has got problems. It's got lots and lots of problems. So I don't know if that's totally the solution, but let's just turn this chroma down. Yeah, you can so you can adjust these chroma, uh, chroma and luma pots uh, and get it to look better or worse. I'm surprised it's getting through this RAM test actually, because normally it crashes. But either way, that is an improvement. I wish I could run something on this that wouldn't crash. Oh my word! Look at the back bit screen. So this computer's clearly got other problems as well. I mean, maybe they're what's causing the interference. The interference is still there, but just not, not really, really bad. Wow, I wonder if that's actually got worse since I've put the modulator in. Wow, <laughs> it's just terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. It's definitely an improvement. So let's just test this little tiny voltage regulator and see what it's doing. Because I think I tested it before, when, that's when I didn't know it wasn't grounded. It looked like it was producing like six volts or something. Yeah, so it's actually producing five volts now and it's getting 
9 volts in. So there's a little tiny voltage regulator on this on this because the the C64C gets 5 volts in here but this one gets 9. So it, it's definitely an improvement but it's maybe showing up the fact that the computer is super broken and it's doing this crazy stuff which appears to be getting worse. Oh, dead test doesn't get in anymore. This uh, this used to get in to the actual um, and actually boot, but it can't even do it anymore. So there it is. That was replacing the modulator on a bread bin C64 with a more modern replacement and working out that the ground pin isn't grounded. So there you go. So if you run into that same problem and maybe this only happens on power boards because of this weird jumper, then hopefully that helps you sort that out. But it hasn't helped me sort out the other problems, but they are unrelated to this, I believe. This is now got much better video output, but the computer appears to have got worse. So there you go.